A hammer imbued with the raw power of thunder and lightning. An unbreakable cudgel that can pin the seas, and an arrow that is as powerful as a nuclear missile. These are but three of the many incredible weapons that have appeared in world mythology. Whether they truly exist or not, all have captured the imagination of humans for centuries. In some cases, these powerful mythological weapons are even academically recognized as important cultural icons. In other words, they don't simply represent power or blessing. They are also symbols of authority, wisdom, and divine salvation. In today's video, we'll walk you through 20 of the most powerful and magical weapons that have appeared in mythology from around the globe. So let's start our video with the Trident of Poseidon. Even if you're unfamiliar with the Greek myths involved, you would surely still associate the Trident with the sea. The representative weapon of Poseidon, the Greek god of the seas, the trident was forged by the Cyclopses and is capable of controlling or creating all forms of water. Within Greek myths, Poseidon also used the trident to create a horse and to root the sacred island of Delos to the seabed. With Poseidon also a god of earthquakes, it is naturally assumed that the trident is capable of shaking the earth too. For number 19, we have Zeus's lightning bolt. Often referred to as Zeus's thunderbolt, the signature weapon of the king of the Greek gods was forged by Cyclopses and given to him to aid in the overthrowing of the Titans. A symbol of Zeus's domain of the sky, the powerful mythological weapon was subsequently also used to defeat other enemies of the Greek gods, the most notorious of which is the giant Typhon. Hesiod's Theogony detailed the epic battle, which offers a clear picture of the power of the bolt. The serpentine Typhon was described as immense, with wings and with a hundred heads of fire-breathing snakes on its shoulder. Despite such fearsome features, Typhon still readily fell when struck by Zeus's lightning bolt. In fact, it was implied that the monster stood absolutely no chance against the weapon. In our number 18 spot, we have Rui Jingubang. The signature armament of Sun Wukong, the Chinese Monkey King, Rui Jingubang means the as you wish golden cudgel in Chinese. Unbreakable, and capable of shrinking or enlarging to incredible sizes, the weapon has a perfect complement to the Monkey King's agility. In Journey to the West, Sun stylishly defeated numerous gods and demons with it. The weapon wasn't created by Sun though, neither was it even a cudgel to begin with. Before Sun stole it from the Eastern Ocean Dragon Palace, the artifact was known as the Dinghai Shenzhen, or Ocean Calming Magical Pin. No more than a huge iron pillar, the artifact was supposedly used by Yu the Great to measure the depths of the world flood during ancient times. After Sun lifted the pillar, it shrunk to the size of a cudgel. Its name and weight of 13,500 caddies were then revealed via inscriptions on its surface. Thereafter, the pillar became the permanent beloved weapon of the mighty monkey king. Moving on to our number 17 is the Axe of Pangu. In Chinese mythology, the world in its present form is said to be the work of the giant Pangu. Himself born of the primordial chaos that existed before everything, Pangu split the sky from the earth with a mighty axe. He also kept pushing the sky upwards till he died. Famous as the legend is though, Pangu's axe hardly appears in other ancient Chinese myths. On top of that, any actual mention tends to be brief. With that said, the axe is increasingly featured in Chinese video games, Tianxia movies, and fantasy television series in modern times. Next up, we have Kusanagi no Tsurugi. The most powerful sword in Shinto mythology is more than just a Japanese mythical weapon. It also represents the divine right of the Japanese royal family to rule the Japanese archipelago. Part of the Japanese imperial regalia, the grass cutter sword was retrieved from the carcass of the dreaded Orochi serpent by Shinto storm god Susano and gifted to his sister, the sun goddess Amaterasu. Thereafter, it was given to the warrior Yamato Takuru, a legendary ancestor of Japanese emperors. Capable of controlling winds and with a blade sturdy enough to chip even the personal armament of Susano, Kusanagi no Surugi is today kept within the Astuta shrine in Nagoya, though none has seen the actual sword for centuries. In 15th place, we have Mjolnir. Thanks to Marvel Comics and its many movies, the legendary hammer of the Norse thunder god Thor is now famous throughout the world. Described in the movies as forged by dwarfs in the heart of a dying star, Mjolnir was extremely durable, enhanced by a variety of enchantments, and usable only by those deemed worthy by the hammer. Additionally, it could also summon thunder when in the hands of Thor and Captain America. Although, the movies contradicted this by earlier stating the mighty hammer has all along been merely channeling Thor's innate power. Within classic North mythology, however, there's no mention of Mjolnir only being usable by Thor. In one of the most famous myths, the hammer was even stolen by a giant. Thor, misled by the mischief of Loki, then had to masquerade as a bride to reclaim it. In the prose Edda, Thor also used his hammer to confer blessings. Additionally, the ancient textbook highlighted that Thor must use Mjolnir together with his enchanted gloves. Next, there is Gugner. The most famous North mythological weapon after Mjolnir, 
Gungnir is the spear of the All-Father Odin, one of the most important Asgardian gods and the father of Thor. Forged and originally owned by dwarves, the spear was swindled from them by Loki and then given to Odin. The Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda contain little else information about Gungnir other than the runes being carved into the tip, as well as stories of Odin attacking the monster wolf Fenrir with it during Ragnarok and that the spear is so well balanced it will always hit a target no matter the skill of the user. Jumping forward to pre-modern times, Richard Wagner made several mentions of Gungnir in his famous operatic cycle, The Ring of Nibelung. Other than breaking the Sword of Sigmund with it, it was also described as made from the wood of the world tree Yggdrasil and full of runes that empowered Odin. In our 13th place spot, we have the Spear of Longinus. More of a religious icon rather than a weapon, the Spear of Longinus is in Christian traditions, the lance that pierced the side of Christ during his crucifixion. Mentioned very briefly in the Gospel of John, the actual act was not to further torment Christ, but to verify that he was dead. Interestingly, the book also never identified the soldier guilty of the act. The name was only mentioned in the apocryphal Gospel of Nicodemus. For Christian theologians, more important is the phrase, there came out of blood and water, from John 19.34. The phenomenon is interpreted as Christ being both God and man. Today, several relics in the world claim to be the Spear of Longinus, or to contain parts of it. None are, however, religiously verified or universally recognized. In pop culture entertainment, the spear is also often depicted as a powerful mythological weapon capable of many miracles. Given that the tip was once stained by the blood of Christ, one can safely say all such depictions are not far-fetched. For powerful item number 12, we have Excalibur. The sword of King Arthur requires little introduction. Numerous appearances in pop culture entertainment have also imbued England's most legendary and possibly most powerful sword with a vast variety of powers. Within classic Arthurian tales, though, Excalibur is more of a representation of the virtues a king should embrace, rather than a fantastical weapon. Like the Kusanagi no Surugi, it also has a symbol of rightful and desirable rule. Nonetheless, most classic tales still describe the mighty sword as exceptionally powerful in the hands of Arthur. In the version told by Joffrey of Monmouth, Arthur could defeat a whole armor by wielding Excalibur. In Thomas Mallory's version, the blade could emit a light that blinds enemies, too. Even the scabbard was believed to be magical. Some versions describe it as capable of preventing bleeding of the wearer, thus a formidable guard against death. And then there was Fragorach. Fragorach, the magical sword of Noada and the silver arm in Irish mythology, is one of the most unusual mythological weapons ever written about. Nicknamed the Whisperer, the sword would whisper when one wields it while standing atop the Irish stone of destiny, Leofull, but this would only happen if the wielder is a rightful owner. Forged by the ancient Irish gods, Fragorach could also pierce any armor, command winds, as well as inflict wounds that will never heal. In our 10th place spot, we have Scherer. Talking sentient weapons are the stuff of anime and modern fantasy fiction, but do you know that one such weapon already appeared in mythology thousands of years ago? The mace of Mesopotamian war god Ninurta, the smasher of thousands, has a unique ability to talk with its owner. In the Lugali, Scherer even acted as the emissary of chief god Enlil and as a battle counselor. Specifically, it was through the mace that Ninurta received the command to slay the serpentine god Kerr. Scherer also provided the strategy to defeat the dreaded demon Asag. What's more, the mace could also fly across great distances. It could even transform into a winged lion. Next up is Gaibulg, another powerful legendary weapon from the Irish mythology, and certainly one of the strangest. The Spear of Mortal Pain is the signature weapon of Cthulhu, the Hound of Ulster. It was gifted to him by his teacher, the female warrior Skatach. Skatach only taught Cthulhu the proper way to use Gaibulg, in other words, no other man can properly wield the weapon. Made from the bones of a sea monster known as the Karuid, the most unique and gruesome feature of this javelin-like weapon is, in turn, the way it decimates its victims. Upon entering a human body, the tip will expand into 30 barbs, leaving no way of removing the weapon without fatally cutting away a victim's flesh. Our number 8 powerful weapon is the Sudarshana Chakra. The signature armament of Vishnu, the Hindu god of preservation, the Sudarshana Chakra is a disc-like, spinning weapon described as having 108 serrated edges. Among its many religious associations, the disc is most famous for representing the Wheel of Time. Described in the Puranas as forged from the same solar material Shiva's trident is made of, the weapon was famously used by the preserver god to behead the prideful observer Svarbhanu. In the Mahabharata, Vishnu's avatar Krishna also used the disc to behead the offensive Sisupala and to create a fake sunset by blocking out the sun. Powerful weapon number 7 is Shiva's Trishula. Unlike in the West, the trident doesn't represent the sea in Asian mythologies and traditions. Instead, the prongs of the uniquely shaped weapon symbolize religious trinities. 
For example, in Hinduism, the Trishula could represent creation, preservation, and destruction. It could also represent the past, present, and future. As for specific Trishulas, the most famous is that of Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction. Described in the Vishnu Puran as fashioned from the solar essence of sun god Surya, the mighty trident not only symbolizes the above-mentioned trinities, it is also regarded as the weapon that destroys physical, spiritual, and ethereal sufferings. The bane of mortal ignorance as well. A truly powerful weapon. Next, our sixth place weapon is Brahmastra. I think that, while mighty, many mythological weapons pale in comparison to real-life modern armaments of mass destruction, such as missiles and bombs. And if you were to include pop culture creations such as phasers and the Death Star, many more might even start to feel mundane. The obvious exception to this would be the Brahmastra, a group of mythological weapons of mass destruction made by Brahma, the Hindu god of creation. The Brahmastra contains power to destroy worlds and vanquish any being. Once used, the surrounding area of the target would also be rendered lifeless. No rain will fall for millennia, and environmental conditions will steadily worsen until permanent extinction settles in. The Brahmastra, to always be used with utmost extreme caution. Our fifth ranked powerful weapon is the Deathly Hollows. The Deathly Hollows is famous in the Harry Potter universe. It brings the dead to life, renders its sorcerer unbeatable, and makes it wearer invisible. However, since no one has ever possessed all three Deathly Hollows components simultaneously, it does one or two of those three things at any given time. The reason why it's so awesome is that anyone who controls all three pieces that make up the Deathly Hollows is said to become the Master of Death. Number four is the One Ring. The One Ring is from Middle Earth in J.R.R. Tolkien's mystical The Lord of the Rings series. What it does is that it controls all of the magical rings of power simultaneously, giving its wearer dominion over Middle Earth. The reason why it's so powerful and awesome is that it brings to its wearer a great lordship, but sometimes at the price of their innocence. As an added bonus, it was created out of the formidable Sauron's own soul. If you're not convinced about its power yet, then watch the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy and see for yourself the power and chaos that it brings. Next up is the Dagger of Time. The Dagger of Time is from the Island of Time in the Prince of Persia Adventure series. It provides unparalleled time-altering powers to its wielder. That means it does more than just make time travel possible. It allows its owner to manipulate time by stopping it, pausing it, fast-forwarding it, and so on. It's like a remote control, but it's also still a dagger that would hurt an opponent should it find its way into their neck. Our second to last ranked weapon is Ice, the Great Sword of House Stark. The Great Sword of House Stark was crafted from magical Valerian steel. The sword was initially found at Winterfell in House Stark within the Game of Thrones universe. It duplicates itself into two swords, pulls off mass executions, slices through other swords, executes its own master, and various other acts of hardcore ferocity. The reason why it's awesome is because it's comprised of White Walker killing material, and it metaphorically represents the division of an empire, which is the entire foundation of the Game of Thrones plot. The time has come to reveal our number one most powerful weapon in world mythology, the Dark One's Dagger. This dagger is from Once Upon a Time's Fairy Tale Land. It was later transported to Storybook after the event in the universe known as the Curse. Its power comes from the fact that it controls the Dark One while simultaneously supplying the Dark One with unmatched magical prowess, fortune, and glory. Many Once Watchers don't know that this dagger was crafted by Merlin and is comprised of a piece of the legendary Excalibur sword. It can also stop portals and change its owner's personality. This weapon has a wicked mind of its own, making it scary to use and impossible to control. So what do you think about all these magical powerful weapons? Which one of these would you choose to wield if given the chance? Be sure to let us know in the comment section below. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends and family. We'll see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye.